Hey everybody, this is Joshua with the Tendonitis Expert. And this video is about the five critical factors of an effective treatment for whiplash. You've probably already tried things that haven't worked, like rest and anti-inflammatories, even a neck brace, but you still have pain, and that's proof is in the pudding that whatever you've done before hasn't worked. So if you're gonna treat your whiplash, might as well do it effectively. And if you're gonna do that, there's five factors you need to effectively cover. So as you know, if you have whiplash, your head whipped from side to side, maybe front or back, and it will over lengthen the front, the back, the sides, and potentially you got some rip and tear. The two bad things that happen really with whiplash that are relevant here is one, you can get tear of the connective tissue, usually where tendons attach to bones and where ligaments attach to bones. And the other is, and this is more problematic over time, is things get tight and they stay tight. So all these muscles get tight and they stay tight, even 10 years later, even 20 years later. So interestingly enough, even though tightness is just one of the five critical factors, it's one of the main ones and really all the other factors all make tightness a factor. So, Five factors are tight muscles, tight connective tissue, scar tissue, chronic inflammation, and lack of nutrition. These are the five things you must deal with if you want to actually fix your whiplash tendonitis or your whiplash dynamic. Whiplash tends to last. Maybe pain comes and goes. Maybe you're fine for years or even a decade, but then you look over your shoulder and your neck pain's back. And then you don't hurt because you looked over your shoulder you hurt because you still have the dynamic of the whiplash tendonitis. You have all the factors are still at play. So let's cover that really quickly. So tight muscles. When your head whips back and forth or side to side, your muscles clamp down to try to hold your head on. Essentially your head is a big old bowling ball on a pencil. So if you're going 50 miles an hour down the road and get hit, all of a sudden your head's gonna whip with a lot of force on your this poor little pencil. Or if you're just standing there and you get punched in the head, there's a lot of force all of a sudden. When that happens, these muscles, they get tight. You have the deep muscles and you have the more superficial muscles like the SCM and the traps. So essentially, depending on what happens, all the muscles from here to here are going to contract. And when that happens, by the way, they compress the spine. Not only that, but when they get tight, they stay tight. And there's reasons for that, and these are the reasons, all five of these. But anyway, so there's some sort of trauma, your head whips around, muscles clamp down, they get tight, and they stay tight. Obviously, if your muscles are too tight, that's a problem. Because when these are tight, and especially when they're long, tight for a long period of time, they're going to make these tight. And then they're going to make your these tight on your back, and they're going to make those on your front, and your shoulder. Everything gets tight. It starts small, and the tightness kind of spreads out from there. So tightness is a factor that you must effectively get rid of. Another factor is connective tissue. This picture, for instance, you see the muscles, but you don't see the connective tissue. But really, you have millions of muscle fibers. Let's say this right here is a muscle fiber. It's wrapped in connective tissue. And all the other millions of muscle fibers are also wrapped in connective tissue. And then bundles of those are wrapped in connective tissue. And then bundles of those are wrapped in connective tissue. And then this whole thing is wrapped in connective tissue. And then there's connective tissue sheet over the whole thing. So there's all sorts of connective tissue layers and sheets and directions and a lot going on there. So the important thing to know about that, I mean, kind of we know that connective tissue is everywhere, but functionally what that means is if your muscles are supposed to be this long, but for a variety of reasons they become short and tight and they're only that long, that's the tight muscles, and then connective tissue shrink wraps, then they're literally stuck that tight essentially. So you can't just relax because this is the new normal. You go to sleep at night or you take a hot bath and they only relax to this tight or this amount of relaxed because that's the new normal. That's the new tight and that's as relaxed as long as it can actually get. So connective tissue is a factor that you have to deal with. Then there's scar tissue. So let's take a view here for scar tissue. So this right here is a ligament that runs all down the very back of your spine. And then you have all sorts of little connective tissue sheets and anchors all through here. You have your joint capsule 
around your facet joints. You have muscles that go from here to here. So they have tendon attachments. You have all these little muscle, little muscle, little muscle, joint capsule, joint capsule, joint capsule, and it can rip anywhere. You can get rips and tears down the back of the neck, and this can even extend down to, let's say this is your hips and your butt. You can, anywhere along the line all the way down there, you can get rip and tear of this particular ligament. Any of these little joint capsules and little connections between vertebra, you can get some rip and tear. You have little ligaments out here too, and any of those can rip and tear. When your head whips that way, and this side lengthens, because your head's going that way, so this all stretches, anything can rip anywhere along here. So point being, you can get little rip and tear at the very, very deep levels, pretty much anywhere through here. Now, a strong structure, all the fibers go in the same direction. But when you get some rip and tear, then what happens is scar tissue lays down. And really what that is, it's the same fibers, but they lay down in different directions. And that's not as structurally strong. So technically it heals, but it just takes one of these tearing off and the brain goes, oh no, we're injured again. So it lays down even more scar tissue. And that's how you get scar tissue buildup. And this scar tissue here, it's not as structurally strong. I mean, it's not really dry and crunch crunchy, but just imagine this dry and crunchy as opposed to nice, soft, strong tissue of fibers that aren't, that haven't been damaged. Point being, you can have some scar tissue buildup right in there. And that over time sends a pain signal to the brain and the brain tells things to get tight, to guard and protect, which causes more problem here because it's compressed, it's tight, you have connective tissue pulling on it, which then sends a signal to the brain to make things more tight. So you see that there's this loop of a feedback loop where things get tight, it causes pain, the brain tightens things up even more, which causes more pain. Blah, blah, blah. So the key there is you can't fix this unless you smooth out the scar tissue and you make it happy again so that it's not sending this signal to the brain. And then the brain stops making things more tight and that tightness stops compressing things and causing more pain. So you have to get in here and find whatever's left in here that's causing problems. And you can do that yourself and we can show you how. Anywho, that's one of the factors is you have to clear out any scar tissue that's sending an ongoing signal to the brain that there's a problem. And then there's inflammation. The main problem with inflammation, aside from, the, aside from that it eats up nutrition, is that inflammation releases chemicals which enhance your sensitivity to pain. So now you're walking around with chemical in your muscles and floating through the tissue and it's making the neuroreceptors on edge. So any little thing hurts depending where you're at. Maybe a breath causes pain or you look to your left and, and it causes pain or just the tight muscles themselves being tight causes pain. And again, what does that do? It tells the brain to make things more tight, which tightens up connective tissue even tighter over time, pulls on scar tissue and compresses the structures that scar tissue is on, turns up the inflammation response so there's more chemical, and you can see how all those are working together to cause pain and problem. And then as far as nutrition, tightness eats up nutrition. Inflammation eats up nutrition. Any stressor, like pain, eats up nutrition. So then, imagine here's a bucket. This is your bucket, and you're supposed to have this much nutrition. But now, for a variety of reasons, you only have this much nutrition. So your body just can't work when your bucket's not full. It's only going to work this good instead of this good. So if you want your body to be working correctly again, which means pain-free, you have to fill up your bucket. So it has all the nutrition it needs to do all the things it needs to do. So these are the five factors that you have to effectively deal with if you want to effectively treat your whiplash. And by that I mean make the pain go away and make the pain go away for good. You have to make tight muscles not tight. You have to lengthen too tight connective tissue. You have to smooth out scar tissue. You have to get rid of inflammation and have the brain turn down the dial on the inflammation response. And you need to increase your nutrition, specific, your specific nutrition, such that your bucket is full. So your body can do what it needs to do. Muscles can't relax, literally, if they don't have the nutrition they need. So you can imagine you get a massage, you feel better for 10 minutes, 
and then you hurt again. That's because your muscles literally can't re relax because they don't have the nutrition that's required to relax. So if you'd like to find out more about an effective treatment for whiplash, go to my website, tendonitisexpert.com, and find the appropriate page.